This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Our story begins in Washington, D.C., where I, my wife, and our friends Elizabeth, Etienne, and their awesome son traveled for a week-long vacation. We saw all of the sites. The White House, Capitol Hill, the Lincoln Memorial, the Washington Monument, the National Museum of Natural History, and this fancy restaurant where you pay a couple hundred bucks to eat raw fish. We also visited George Washington's Mount Vernon, where we took in beautiful sights from the garden, visited the final resting place of our nation's first president, and toured the estate mansion, one of the most iconic 18th century homes in America. To be sure, the mansion was beautiful, but to be frank, we couldn't really appreciate it in all its majesty during our paid tour. Nothing against the mansion's staff, they were great, friendly, informative, welcoming. However, our particular party accommodated a rather large number of middle school students on a class trip. You may think me about to launch into a fiery diatribe concerning rude, rough, and rowdy 12-year-olds, but you would be wrong. My ire instead settled upon, of all people, their teacher and chaperone, we'll call her Mrs. Harper. I don't know if that was her name, probably not, but she certainly seemed to me like a Mrs. Harper, and in the very worst way. Mrs. Harper was sure of one thing during our group's tour, and that was her students would behave. Now, I know this was her mission because every 120 seconds, Mrs. Harper made sure to loudly announce, Everybody quiet down, this is important, we're learning about George Washington, Listen up! Of course, none of Mrs. Harper's students were talking or misbehaving. They were all perfectly respectful, which is far more than I could say about Mrs. Harper. You see, Mrs. Harper seemed completely oblivious to the fact that she, yes, she was the one who needed to quiet down. Every single room we went into was exactly the same routine. This is the little parlor when George Washington returned home from the president. Everybody settle down. Listen up. This man's going to tell us about this room. He, he says it's called the little parlor. Let's all be respectful and listen to what he has to say. If you have any questions about what he says, you need to be sure to ask. Mrs. Harper couldn't see the 15 or so sets of eyes from the rest of the party pleading with her to be quiet. Nor could she see the 20-some burning sets of cheeks on all of her embarrassed students' faces. Now I ask you, dear viewer, what does one do in this situation? How does one even even begin to approach addressing a circumstance such as this. I don't want to be the guy, and I certainly don't want to challenge a teacher's authority in front of her students, and besides, as I've gotten older, I've come to love awkward social situations. They're better than TV. So the tour continued. While we all would have loved to listen to the tour guide, instead we were treated to front row seats at the Mrs. Harper Show, where we learned all about her and her students. We're on a field trip from Boston. Sally, is that gum? Everybody listen up. This gentleman is saying something about the color of the dining room walls. The show went on for a while, but the highlight came when we arrived at President George Washington's bedchamber. This is a rather somber part of the tour. It's the location where Washington drew his last breath. But the seriousness of the location and occasion seemed lost on Mrs. Harper as she decided to take over tour guide duties for a moment to tell her students, Listen up, everybody. Everybody, this is George Washington's bedroom. You know the old joke, this is where George slept? Well, this is where he slept. Anyway, tell us how he died. At this, I was genuinely curious. So during a break of activity, I scoured the internet in search of this supposed old joke, this is where George slept. After several minutes, I could not for the life of me track this old joke down. What old joke? There is no old joke that goes, this is where George slept. Is there? My mind filled with possibilities. Where had she heard this old joke? Was it simply an inside joke between friends that she overheard and then assumed was a common joke among Americans? How many years of her life had she lived walking around Boston thinking that this was a joke everyone knew? Had she ever tried to crack this joke in conversation with a student or a fellow teacher or a friend in her social circle only to leave all of them confused or perhaps slightly disturbed? Perhaps most importantly, what is the joke in the joke, this is where George slept? I have searched this sentence up, down, top, bottom, left, right, inside, out, forwards and backwards, and I cannot locate any hint of a joke within it. 
This nagged at me for the rest of the tour. Eventually, we arrived at the gift shop. There was plenty of George Washington memorabilia to be had, from tote bags to commemorative coins. They even had George Washington sword letter openers. But my wife's eyes settled on a row of coffee mugs available for purchase. This mug. Why is this a thing? What was the meaning of it all? I went home from our vacation with far more questions than answers. Several months later, our friend and travel companion Elizabeth was browsing Amazon.com to purchase various knickknacks for her home, and as she went to check out, Amazon recommended a DVD to add to her online shopping cart. Just before hitting no thanks, she froze. For you see, the motion picture in question was titled, George Washington slept here. She bought it. She sent it to us. We watched it. George Washington Slept Here is a 1942 Jack Benny comedy about a Manhattan couple that move into a dilapidated house in rural Bucks County, Pennsylvania, which was believed to have been used by George Washington as a temporary home during the Revolutionary War hence the movie's name. Upon arriving, they find the house completely unlivable and spend the entire first act of the story pouring unseemly amounts of money into the fixer-upper in hopes of restoring it to its former glory. It's a very loud slapstick affair that never has a moment of peace and has an amazing ability to leave viewers unsure if they're being entertained or annoyed during the entire flick's runtime. In other words, it's a Jack Benny movie. However, certain cinephiles might take great delight in one particular on-screen performance during the movie's opening, where our main characters find themselves kicked out of their New York apartment after their dog chews up a fancy schmancy carpet owned by the property's landlord, thus setting off the entire silly scenario. If this little pupper looks a little familiar, that's because she's arguably the most distinguished dog in cinema history. You see, the tiny terrier's true name is Terry, and three years before George Washington slept here, she showed off her acting chops by playing a little dog named Toto in a little picture called The Wizard of Oz. Anyway, to answer your question, Clarissa, that's where this coffee mug comes from. Thanks for asking. This video was sponsored by Squarespace. Got an idea for a website? Maybe you've got a creation to share, or maybe you're wanting to start an online business. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful website. They offer easily customizable templates, online stores, and the marketing tools and analytics to take things to the next level. Squarespace easily links with your other social media profiles so you can cross-post on different platforms all at once. It's easy to set up. Whether you're wanting a site for personal or business use, their service is designed to simplify the process and get you up and running in no time. You can try it out for free by going to squarespace.com and starting a free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash austin mcconnell to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.